What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Jesus is our only refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise, forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find a solace there. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Welcome to prayers on this Friday, the 5th of February, day 373 of 2021, or so it feels. Things are much the same here. Uh, except my son has a new hobby. Uh, he bought himself a melodica, as you do in lockdown, and he's now posting random videos of himself playing requests. Today, so far, we've had the Titanic theme. We've had Bohemian Rhapsody, the Imperial March, Mozart Concerto 4, Movement 3, and the Wallace and Gromit theme, to name, such a, to name but a few. We really are living a life here in lockdown. Well, I just hope that makes you smile as you imagine the beautiful melodic tones of a melodica rattling round my house. Let us hear our psalm, Psalm 86, verses 1 to 12. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant, for I put my trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of trouble, I will call upon you for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name, for you are great. You do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you, so that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Tonight's Old Testament reading is from the final chapter of 
Deutero Isaiah or Second Isaiah. It is regarded as a poem written to the Israelite community. It contains words of hope and restoration and some familiar words that may just have a tune come ringing into your head. Let us listen for the word of God in Isaiah 55 verses 1 to 13. Ho! Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Combine wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear to me, and come to me, listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the, to the, bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall, it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led back in peace and the mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle and it shall be to the Lord for a, a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think there may be a little bit of prophetic words in there. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven. I don't know about your weather forecast, but mine isn't looking very good. Instead of our Old Testament song tonight, as I copied out the readings, I realised that the second reading was from Galatians 5. And it contains the fruits of the Spirit. And I just think those are really good reminders. We go through the difficult bits and then we come out at the, at the fruits of the spirit at the end of this reading. So it's Galatians 5, 16 to 24. Live by the spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit. And what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now, the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I'm warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Let us hear and there the word of God. Our Gospel reading tonight is Mark 9, verses 2 to 13. 
a reading that we refer to often as the transfiguration and for me a bit of a joy because we just once again see Peter the human being Peter the man that gives us all a little bit of hope Mark 9 verses 2 to 13 six days later Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves and he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them and there appeared to them Elijah with Moses who were talking with Jesus then Peter said to them Rabbi it is good for us to be here let us make three dwellings one for you one for Moses and one for Elijah he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they'd seen until after the son of man, of man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. Then they asked him, Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? He said to them, Elijah is indeed coming first to restore all things. How then is it written about the Son of Man that he is to go through many sufferings and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come, and they did to him whatever they pleased, as it is written about him. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The words we've heard from Scripture tonight contain each contain something quite special. Isaiah's words encouraged hope. The words in Galatians give us guidance and focus. And the gospel according to Mark tells us a ripping yarn, a confusing tale for those with Jesus in so many ways, and a challenge to us too, but equally a reassurance. We have hope. We have ideas to aim for. But we have the Son of Man surrounded by normal and human and fallible people. God has ideals for us all. We seek to live up to these ideals, but God in Christ still welcomes us, loves us and blesses us, even if we fall short. I work from home currently. I'm becoming an absolute expert in procrastination. Yesterday, I cleaned out the spout of my drinking bottle with a cotton bud. I was so busy avoiding doing something. I find myself struggling to focus. And yet, I still find the strength to carry on. I keep managing to put one foot in front of the other. And I even find joy. And I know that God is good. And that is why, even when I struggle, even when things are tough, even when I feel completely directionless at times, I light a candle and I stop and I give thanks for a lot of things in my life. And I hold before God those who perhaps don't have the opportunities and possibilities and joy that I can find. And I focus on the fruits of the Spirit and think, what can I do that goes beyond me, that may give me a focus and that may share joy with others? The kindness, the gentleness and the love that God calls us to share with others is ours to give. And on the days that we can't give it, then please, please, Ask someone else if they can give you a bit of theirs. Our New Testament song is from 1 Peter 2 verses 21 to 25. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin. No guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted in God who judges justly. 
Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of our souls. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God and Father, Come and dispel the darkness from our hearts, that in the radiance of your brightness we may know you, the one and fading light, glorious in all eternity. I hope you can see my candle behind me. This is the candle I light and just focus on. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in our crucified Redeemer, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come offering our thanks. Thanks to God for the blessings, for the times that we have been able to pick ourselves up, for the little joys. This week I walked to the new Lidl that has opened in the town that I live in and actually spent some time with my husband looking down the middle aisle at Lidl. There we found joy and gave thanks and then bought a little gift for somebody. Let us hold our peace for a moment as we give thanks for the things that have blessed us this week. Loving God, we give you thanks that we can offer our thanks in this time when it just feels so samey, when life is tough and concentration is difficult and procrastination is such an easy thing to do. We give you thanks for the relationships we have, for the beauty beyond our windows. And we give you thanks that we can gather as this worshipping community finding strength and hope and blessing in this shared time. Amen. In the love of God, let us complete our evening sacrifice of praise. We pray to the Lord for the unity and peace of the Holy Church of God throughout the world. Particularly tonight, we think of the Reverend Jarrell Robin Robinson Brown facing death threats and calls for his curacy offer to be taken away from him because of a tweet that he wrote without really thinking through the consequences. We stand up for race, to racism in all its forms and abhor this sort of treatment based on sexuality and on race. Lord bless him and uphold him. We pray to the Lord for the peace and stability of all peoples and for those in authority, for our own country and its national life and for all who live among us. We give thanks this week for the rolling out of the COVID vaccination programme. We hold before you, Lord, our Prime Minister and the government and all of those who are seeking to lead our country in this difficult time. We pray to the Lord for a blessing on our homes, for our relations and friends and all whom we love. We pray to the Lord. We give thanks for all those who have had their vaccines in recent days. We pray, we hold before God, all those facing the challenge of COVID-19, all key workers, NHS and care home staff, and any and all putting their lives at risk for the good of the rest of us, by ensuring essential services continue. We pray for those whose COVID bubbles, whose, whose school bubbles have burst due to COVID-19. From among those who know the challenge of COVID-19, we pray for two of our ministers and their households and one of our staff members. 
for the Reverend Samuel Salungwe, his wife Evelyn and son Lusungu, the Reverend Liz Adams, her husband Jay, daughter Chloe and Jay's mum Ellie. We pray with Donna Gordon, our Synod Safeguarding Officer, for her daughter Bethany in isolation at home. And we pray with Alison Hadley and all who, like her, know the challenge of running nursery and early years provision in these worrying times. We pray for the Ark Nursery in Leicester, where there are two positive cases of mums whose families are now isolating, praying especially for Gemma, praying that in her fear and weakness, she and those closest to her may know your comfort and strength. We pray for all of those recovering from COVID and struggling with the fatigue and the weakness that this brings. We continue to pray with Celia for her grandson Alfie and the family, with Alison and Paul for James, with Andy for his dad Michael, with Prince for Cheryl, with the Reverend Bachelard Kaiser Yemtsa for his mum and for the, Mike, the Reverend Michael Pevy. I ask too for prayers for my family and for my dad, Brian. For the sick and the suffering and for all who minister to their needs, we pray to the Lord. We hold before you now, Lord, the bereaved, the Reverend Douglas Watson and all who grieve for his wife, Sheila. For Donna Gordon and all who grieve for her sister, Faye. The Reverend Martin Ferris and all who grieve for his mum, Marion. The family of the Reverend Ralph Evely. For those closest to John Shaw and those who grieve for him. For all who sleep in Christ, that Christ will remember them in his heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. And in a moment of quiet, we offer our own prayers, imagining in our heads those for whom we have concerns, those people, places and situations close to us or far away from us, where we pray that God's light may shine. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, we commend our whole life into the hands of God and we wrap all these words up in the words that Jesus gave us, offering these words in the form that most works for us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. It is good to gather with you on these Friday evenings Thank you for your patience on my singing and my little stories. But it is a blessing to end my week being able to share in worship with you. So thank you for that. And may we go well into the weekend. And if the snow comes, let us be safe and uh, enjoy, if that's your sort of thing, whether it's looking out the window or whether it's going to build a snowman. And may the Lord bless us. May the Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace and may we sleep well. Amen. <laughs>